Hello guys, how are you doing? You have been asking me to make videos that would help you settle in Canada in the initial days of your immigration. So this is Dreamland Canada, a video series that would enable you to know the minute details of life in Canada. They will guide you to make a buttery smooth transition from your home country to your dreamland. I would be providing you all the relevant information about living in Canada so that you don't face any difficulty while immigrating to your dreamland. This is one of the most requested videos. It is about cost of living in Canada in the year 2019. I would keep bringing videos like this regularly so if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please subscribe it right now. Okay if you're a student or a working professional who is willing to move to Canada this year then this video is for you because in this video I've tried to cover each and every minute detail about your expenses in Canada. So this video is about cost of living in Canada in the year 2019 and this video is especially for the newcomers. So without further ado, let me start this video. Okay, so let's first of all talk about the key expenses. So the biggest expense is your house rent. So we'll talk about it. We'll also talk about the hydro bills. We'll also talk about the bills of your television and internet and your mobile bills as well. Your grocery shoppings, your transportation and miscellaneous expenses like gym, you know, probably some shopping or movies, entertainments have also been covered in this video. Okay, now before starting the list of the expenses, I have to tell you a few assumptions. City of stay. Obviously, the expenses actually differ from one city to the other, from one province to the other. So all the expenses that I've told in this video are in respect to Toronto and GTA region, which is Greater Toronto area. Okay, now the size of family. So, okay, so in this video, I've covered all the expenses probably for a family of one to three people. Now it's very important to realize that each of us is different. We also hail from different places of the world. Uh, we have different eating tastes, we have different fashion senses, we have different habits. So it's very difficult to generalize things but still I've tried to generalize a few of the expenses. You can always customize your expenses according to your own habits. Okay, now first of all accommodation. So, so just a couple of days back I uploaded a video where I gave the information about different types of houses in Canada. So in this video, I've uh, given the rents for all of those uh, different types of housing options. So first of all, you have paying guests. So for a paying guest, you might have to pay something like uh, 500 to $800 in the GTA region. Mind it, I'm not talking about the downtown Toronto because it's very expensive. So I'm giving you the you know, the expenses of uh, houses, house rents in the GTA region. Now, share apartment or condominium, you would have to pay something like 700 to $1,100 for a basement apartment. You might have to pay something like uh, 1000 to $1,500. Now, for an apartment, you might have to pay something like 1000 to $2,200. Now, this is very, you know, a big difference uh, which you see over here because uh, for a thousand dollar you might get something like a studio apartment now if it gets you know if it's a one bedroom you it would cost you something like 1400 you know if it's like a, a two bedroom it would cost you like 1700 and so on okay a condominium uh, so you know a condominium would cost you something like 1500 to uh, 2500 dollars a townhouse would cost you similar, you know, it would probably be a bit cheaper uh, when you go on the higher end. So it would cost you uh, something like $1,500 to $2,000. A semi-detached house would cost you something like $1,800 to $2,500. And a detached house would give would cost you uh, the most, that would be $2,000 to $3,500. Now, uh, as I've told you, these are all Canadian dollars that I'm talking about. And of course, uh, the rents actually differ from for 
the facilities that uh, you are being provided with it also differs uh, with uh, the location if it's closer to the metro then obviously it would be expensive and uh, if it is you know further it would be a bit cheaper so all of these factors you know uh, actually decide the events in the gta region of course if you are living in the downtown then it would be even more expensive so probably you can add like uh, two uh, 200 to 300 dollars uh, in each of uh, these uh, rents if you're talking of downtown Toronto because that part is obviously the most expensive one in Toronto okay one point that I need to add over here is the rental insurance or the tenant insurance that we have to pay and it generally starts uh, from around $20 uh, for a for one room place uh, it, it might you know go high up to around 60 or 70 dollars and that is per month okay now let's talk about the transportation this is the official screenshot of uh, TTC which covers you know probably the trams the buses the metro or train everything is covered so this is the screenshot from 2019 so over here you can find that the for a single ticket you have to pay around $325 um, that is $3.25 uh, and for seniors and students it's $2.10 however you can take a weekly pass as well which is uh, $43.75 and $34.75 uh, per person and uh, you can take a monthly pass as well which is most economical if you have to travel uh, to go for the interviews if you have to travel to go and meet different people in that case you can take the monthly pass you can travel as much as you want to so there's no limit in the travel if you take a monthly pass or a weekly pass so uh, if you get a presto card then there's a little discount uh, you have to pay around three dollars okay for children uh, there is a different fare which is also mentioned over here okay now here i haven't covered if you are going to get a car because you know it's for the newcomers probably uh, for all those people who'd be you know coming here for um, in the initial months and i would actually be covering it in a separate video altogether okay uh, now the utilities now utilities would include your mobile bill your internet and tv bills your electricity gas and water bills which is also called you no know, hydro in canada let's talk about all of them one by one now the mobile bill so mobile bill actually differs from one company to the other i found charter is among the cheapest ones in the toronto gta region so you have to pay 35 dollars per month for one gb of data and unlimited calling in canada um, you have to pay 50 dollars per month for 8 gb of data and uh, you know it differs from one company to the other for example in fido you need to pay sixty dollars for four gb so it differs from one company to the other for rogers or for bell you even might to pay a bit higher now the internet bills it becomes kind of essential for you if you're living in canada to have internet uh, broadband internet in your home so it is you know it also differs from uh, fifty five dollars fifty dollars and they have different plans up going up to you know eighty ninety dollars so they had two screenshots for fido and rogers okay now you also get bundled offers over there so if you can if you want to get a tv plus internet offer this is the screenshot from rogers and this is again a screenshot from the website official website in 2019 uh, you would be getting something like uh, 95 dollars per month for TV plus internet, uh, that's the basic uh, payment that you need to pay. And after that, if you want to get a TV plus internet plus home phone, then uh, you need to pay something like $105. You can go onto their website and check out the details, you know, which all facilities will be uh, provided. If you get a home phone, if you get a TV, what all the details, I won't go into, uh, into that at the moment. Electricity, gas and water bills for a one to two bedroom apartment or condominium you would uh, get a bill of something like uh, 50 to 70 dollars and for a three to four bedroom or maybe a semi-detached house or a detached house you would get a bill of something around 
$7,200 or maybe uh, for a detached house you might get it for around $120. Now this obviously depends on the consumption that uh, you do but uh, generally you know more or less it stays around the same value. Now the groceries. Now this is one of the most difficult parts uh, in this video for me because it's very difficult to decide the uh, grocery how much one would consume uh, in one week or one month. So I've Try to do it over here per person per week. So if your consumption is on the lower level, in that case, uh, let's say you uh, make homemade food and for around six days a week, then in that case you would spend something like fifty to sixty dollars, and that's per person per week. Uh, let's say you go to a restaurant uh, once a week, you would spend something like fifteen dollars. You know, it might differ from ten dollars to twenty dollars. Now, somebody who maybe spends more, who has higher consumption, uh, you would probably spend something like $70 to $80. And if you go out for eating probably twice or thrice a week, then you would spend something like $30 to $50. Okay, now the miscellaneous charges. Something like, uh, you know, gym memberships. So you would spend $40 to $60 in a gym membership. For a movie, you might have to spend something like 12 to 20 dollars uh, for shopping you know it is obviously as per wish you can shop whatever you want to and how much you want to so i can't generalize it and also for trips if you want to go and uh, move around canada or maybe outside canada then it's it's quite difficult uh, to judge that or to finalize that so i haven't put any number next to these two now if you're living in canada you might be quite habitual to drinking coffee so in that case you know if you do have that habit you might spend something like uh, 50 to 100 dollars uh, for a coffee but i haven't included that here okay now time for totaling again all the same parameters a house rent a mobile bill internet plus tv bill your hydro bills your groceries transportation and miscellaneous uh, charges as well so if uh, you are a single guy in that case, you would spend something like uh, $500 to $1,500. $500 if you get the rent as a paying guest and $1,500 if you get a one-bedroom apartment. It's very difficult to generalize again, but still. Uh, for a mobile bill, you would spend something like uh, $40 to $80. For an internet uh, plus TV bundle package, you would spend like $80 to $190. For hydro bills, you would spend like $30 to $80. It depends on your consumption, obviously, so it's, again, difficult to finalize. Now, your groceries, you'd spend something like uh, $200 to $600 for transportation. You'd spend like $100 to $150. Uh, if you get an Uber, then obviously you'd spend more. For miscellaneous expenses, I would assume you would spend something like $50 to $250. So, on the left-hand side... All of those expenses are mentioned if you are living there on a savings mode. But if you haven't activated your savings mode and you want to live pretty freely, you know, you want to live a very easy life over there, you don't have, you don't worry about your expenses, then probably the right column would be for you. So overall, if you have activated your savings mode, then you can, you know, spend life there in, in Toronto GTA region for $1,000 and uh, if you want to you know live a very pretty good life without you know thinking about the money you would spend something like uh, $3,000 something between you know $2,700 to $3,000 okay now for somebody who is a couple so in that case your house rent would increase from $1,000 and it might go up to $2,500 it's your choice so thousand dollars for the basement and two thousand five hundred probably for a semi-detached house or maybe a condominium uh, now mobile bills would double uh, you know, probably from eighty dollars to one fifty dollars internet plus tv would be the same so eighty to one ninety hydro bills would you know increase slightly so probably fifty to hundred dollars groceries would definitely increase so you would need to pay something like three fifty to thousand dollars obviously it depends from uh, one one's eating habits to the others now the transportation you would spend like uh, 200 to 300 dollars because it would also double and uh, you know miscellaneous charges would also double so something like 100 to 500 dollars obviously there's no limit in shopping and uh, traveling around so but 
I've tried to generalize again. So again, on the lower level, if you are activated your savings mode, you would spend something like eighteen hundred to two thousand dollars in uh, in the GTA region. However, if uh, you are actually you know if you haven't activated your savings mode, then you would spend something like four thousand seven hundred, four thousand eight hundred, or maybe uh, five thousand dollars while living in the GTA region. Now, if you have a if you have a kid as well, you have a family of three people. In that case, uh, you would you know still live in the same home, right? So you would spend something like thousand dollars to two thousand five hundred dollars. Mobile uh, charges would be the uh, same. I haven't assumed uh, that your kid would have would have a separate mobile. Now your internet charges would be the same. Your hydro charges would be the same. Your grocery bill would increase. So let's say you know four fifty to twelve hundred. Uh, again, an assumption here. Now your transportation would slightly increase, uh, then it would be like 250 to 400 and your miscellaneous uh, charges would also increase from 150 to 700 dollars. So in a nutshell, if you're a family of three people and you've activated your savings mode, then you would spend something like 2000 dollars and um, if you want to live a very good a free life without caring about the expenses, then you would spend something like uh, $5,000 or maybe uh, $5,200. Now, if you have a kid, there's very important thing that you should notice that uh, Canada Child Benefit. So you would get some money every month from the Canadian government as well. So probably, you know, $300, $400, depending on different factors. I've got a video for that. I'll provide the link for that in the description box. You can check it out. But overall, you know, the in a nutshell, it would be uh, something like two thousand to five thousand uh, dollars for a, for a family of three people. So this th this was it. I think that uh, you know all of these details uh, would help you somehow. Uh, it's statistics that have taken me a while to calculate, but I still hope that uh, it would be helpful for you. I will make a separate video for all of those people who uh, want to uh, plan about getting a car in Canada, all of the expenses, how you can get it, it would be covered in a separate video altogether. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please click the like button if you think it was helpful for you and share it with your friends if you think it can be helpful for your friends. And also subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet.